60 years ago, aquariums were a little different than how they are today. Nowadays, the rimless aquarium is all the rage, but back then, the meta frame was where it was at. It's no secret that I absolutely love rimless aquariums. I think that they showcase scapes beautifully, and I try to use them whenever possible. However, there's no denying that there's a certain charm and beauty about the postmodern look of a meta frame aquarium. They just seem to tell the story of a bygone era and, in my opinion, are a very interesting part of the history of aquariums. It's also really cool to see escape within one of these because the futuristic appearance of the metal just showcases things in a different way. I was lucky enough to find this one a few years ago in the trash. It's just been collecting dust ever since though because I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. I have a very strong feeling that this has been collecting dust long before it ever was in my possession. Because of this, I'm going to have to do some serious repairs on this before I can get it set up. I'll show you what's involved with that. I think the best place to start is by cleaning out all this junk. Without taking care of we can get a better look inside of here and you'll see how it differs from what we're doing today. The bottom was actually made out of a piece of slate instead of glass. Another thing about these tanks is that they are very prone to leaking and that's due to the fact that they are sealed with asphalt. You can see it underneath of the glass here in between the metal and on the outsides. With this in mind, as I take a look at this tank, I believe that it's probably been resealed at least twice since it was built. You'll see this old silicone seam going up the side. Even though it is really old, I don't think that's original. And that differs from the silicone along the bottom and the top, which I can tell are different because they're not quite as degraded and they're black. Fixing the seal on this is one of the most important things I'm gonna have to do, so that's where I'll begin. In order to do that properly, I have to remove all of the old silicone. I have a corner scraper and a razor scraper to do the job. I'll remove the bulk of it with the corner scraper and then I'll go back with the razor scraper and do the detail work. I got all the old silicone removed but I have a serious issue. As I was scraping out this bottom area here I slipped and jammed it right into the side cracking the glass. So that throws a wrench in my entire plan. I was thinking I'll be able just to remove all of the old silicone, reseal it, and I'll be good to go. However, now because of that, I have to dismantle the entire thing and put it back together. That's easier said than done, of course, but there's a silver lining to all of this. If you look just below the crack that I made, the glass was already broken behind the seal. So in replacing that, I'll kind of solve both of those issues, but I probably could have got away with just covering this small one with some silicone. In order to take this apart, I'm going to have to remove the piece of slate first. And in theory, I should be able to just remove all of the asphalt and have it just pop right out. Once I removed most of the seal from the underside with the scraper, I simply popped the slate out of place, as you see here. I more or less followed the same process for the glass as well. I used scrapers and other tools to cut into and remove as much of the asphalt as possible. I ran into yet another issue though. Unfortunately, I accidentally broke another piece of glass. That's why you'll almost always see me wearing these gloves when I work with glass. Anyway, the process of removing the glass is very specific. You'll see here that the top lip of the frame actually wraps around the glass. Because of this, I had to loosen the bottom first. Then I simply pulled the pieces away one by one. With the glass removed, there was still a good bit of asphalt remaining on the inside of the frame. I made sure to remove all of this so I can get an optimal seal later on. Down to the bare metal and it's looking great. You'll notice that it's much shinier than before as well. That's thanks to some barkeeper's friend that I used to bring it back to life. I sprinkled it onto a wet paper towel and made sure to polish every inch of the metal. Whenever I began this restoration, I intended to just clean off and reuse all of the existing glass. Now as you saw, I broke two pieces and I actually think it would be easier and less work just to replace all of them. Glass is pretty cheap and they had exactly what I needed at Home Depot. These are the correct thickness, and two of them are already the exact size of the sides. I'll have to cut down the others, though. 
I followed the same process as usual. I oiled the cutting wheel, made my measurements, scored the glass, and snapped them along the edges. I've got the glass all cut down and sanded, so they're safe to handle. Before I can secure these into the frame though, I gotta tape them off as well as the frame itself. Even though I'm gonna replace all of the glass with the new stuff, I think that I have to keep the slate. This is a really cool feature of the Metaframe tank, and if I were to replace it with glass, I think that would kinda defeat the whole purpose of this restoration. Using the slate comes with the challenge though. What silicone should I use to seal the tank? Now although the stuff that I normally use may work, I doubt that it's going to adhere properly to the slate and it will probably cause leaks in no time. After scouring various forums and websites, I gathered that Dowsil 795 silicone is the correct sealant for the job. This will adhere to both the glass and the slate, and yes, it's aquarium safe. I have the frame and glass all taped up have the appropriate silicone, which means I can proceed with reassembling the tank. I gotta say, this process was way more involved than I anticipated. Sure, it's similar to what I usually do, but working within the frame was a challenge. Anyway, I began by applying silicone to the inside of the top groove. Then I applied it within the corners. This took a while because I wanted to cover the metal completely, since none of it was visible from the inside when I started. After all, I'm trying to refurbish this piece, so I want it to look as close to how it originally did. I went on to insert the glass in the opposite order it was removed. I fit them in at an angle to go through the frame and up into the top of the groove. I ran more silicone along the bottom for the slate. I dropped this in and centered it within the glass. Then I applied the interior beads and smoothed them out for consistency. I carefully removed the tape to create those sharp lines. As you saw, I masked off the outside as well. I did this to minimize the amount of cleanup required. I doused a paper towel in some isopropyl alcohol and wiped away the excess. After letting it cure for the appropriate amount of time, I'm left with a tank that looks very similar to how it did before. Maybe a little bit nicer though since it's all cleaned up and everything's sealed properly. I know that initially I had no intent on taking this apart, but I'm actually really glad that I did. Obviously having it sealed with silicone is going to ensure that it lasts a long time, but I think the biggest difference is actually going to be in the glass. The old stuff no doubt was covered in scratches which would hinder visibility, but it also had a higher iron concentration. So even just looking at this now, I can tell that visibility is much greater, and when we're making a tank for a display, that's gonna make a huge difference. Anyway, none of this really matters unless this holds water, so I should probably do a water test. I left the tank full for a little while and it holds water perfectly. You'll notice it looks a little bit different from before though, and that's because I installed a piece of window frost film on the back for a cleaner look. With those things addressed, that means I can finally move on to the fun part, the scape. Now I'm going to do things a little bit differently in this one, and I'll build on a piece of corrugated plastic instead of in the tank itself. Doing it like this will make it a lot easier for me to make an intricate scape that I can drop right into the tank. Now the materials I've selected are some Mupani wood and dragonstone that I'll combine together with super glue and dragonstone dust. As I set this up, I'm going to have my filter in the back so that way I can integrate it within the scape and keep it hidden. I've shown this process before and it's something I really like to do. Gluing the scape outside of the tank has a lot of advantages. The obvious is that it's much easier to assemble the pieces without the restrictions of glass. Of course, you have to ensure not to make it too large, but that's simple enough. Gluing everything together and sprinkling on the rock dust also allows for more creativity. The dust causes the glue to dry much faster, locking everything together in a matter of minutes. This not only allows you to seam pieces together so they look like a single cohesive structure, but it also minimizes falling pieces. Anyone who's done this for a number of time knows exactly what I'm talking about with that. 
it's definitely more prevalent when you're a beginner. But you get a beautiful scape all set up and you go to adjust one detail and then the whole thing comes toppling down. That's not going to happen if you glue it all together. Because of this, it also makes long-term maintenance significantly easier. You can scrub, gravel vac, trim plants, and so on without disrupting the hardscape. That's especially helpful when you have a lot of tanks because you can streamline your process without being super careful. The result is a simple and effective scape that I think will look awesome with a lush jungle of plants. Since I want a lot of plants, I kept that in mind as I placed elements. I also accounted for the features of the materials themselves. Dragonstone has a very directional nature, so when you're placing the pieces, it's very important to keep a directional nature. In this case, I kept them in the upright position. I did something similar with the driftwood as well, keeping them on the diagonal. There's some play since they're free flowing, but I kept them going in that general direction. As I said when I started, I also built things up in a way that hides the filter. There's nothing worse to the aesthetic than excessive hardware that creates an eyesore. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. I didn't end up needing the corrugated plastic. It was strong enough on its own, so I'm able to just have it as is. Anyway, before I can drop this in, I have to rinse it off to remove debris. I think this looks awesome and fits the space perfectly. That means we can move on and add the substrate. Before I do, I'm gonna remove everything because if I were to fill this up as is, I'd lose a lot of the hardscape with the depth of substrate. Anyway, I mixed up some sand, gravel, and aqua soil for this blend. Although I could have got away with just using aqua soil, for me at least, I find it kind of annoying to plant in on its own. So I like to mix in these other things to make it easier. With that addressed, I'll add everything back in as it was before. I'm really pleased with how this is turning out, but the thing that's really gonna bring it all together are the plants. I'll get this filled up with water and then we can add them. I'm not going too crazy here and I'll just add a few types of plants. First, I'm starting with some java fern in the background. Around the java fern and most of the other hardscape features, I filled in a lot of the tank with Rotala indica. This is a great stem plant, and all of these are actually trimmings from a few of my other tanks. I also added a few stems of Hygrophila corymbosa to fill in more of the background. In the foreground, I added some Cryptocorini lutea. As I did all of this, I stirred up the tank, so I did a quick water change to clear up the water. Lastly, I put some Seuss Fosso Tongue in the foreground for more green and texture. I got it all filled up and looking awesome. I still have to get the filter running, add the lights and lid, and then we can get it stocked.
not too shabby for a 60 year old tank if you ask me. It took a lot of work to get it refurbished and looking proper, but I'm really pleased with the result. In fact, I think it reaffirms what I said in the beginning of the video, that there's something beautiful about seeing escape within one of these. There's just something charming about it, don't you think? All in all, I'm so glad I finally took the time to do this project. It's cool to have a piece of aquarium history that will live on for years to come. Sure, it's not totally original at this point, but that's fine by me if it's not leaking and the fish enjoy it. Anyway, that's all for now. As always, I hope you all enjoyed it and learned something new. If you made it this far and haven't liked and subscribed yet, it would mean a lot. Until next time, Serpa Squad, take care and peace.